This video covers one of the most common pedal designs on the market, often found as the standard pedal supplied by manufacturers on a huge range of cycles. So here's our seized bike pedal that needs to be serviced. First step is to remove the pedals. In this example I use a 15mm bike spanner. Please note that the left pedal is undone by turning clockwise and the right pedal is undone by turning anti-clockwise. So on these pedals they're undone using a 15mm spanner. Now you can either use a standard mechanic spanner or a cycle spanner. Now also note the position to put the spanner. If you put it like this you won't get any leverage. But if you keep a low angle near to the crank you can easily squeeze those two together and there's your leverage. So on this one, which is the left hand pedal, you do note that it is actually undone by turning it clockwise, which is quite unusual when most conventional screws and threads are done up clockwise. So just remember that one for the left hand pedal. Also note on the end of the pedal, it says L for left. So you know that's the left pedal. So moving on to the right pedal now, again, watch the position that you put the spanner on. If you were to put it on here, which is an extreme example, you would not get any leverage at all. So keep the spanner and the crank close together with a small angle. And then it's easy enough to get some leverage on there to undo. So I'll speed this pedal up. And again on the end of the axle of this pedal, you'll see the letter R for right. can be clearly seen there. It may also be stamped on the edge of the axle as well. So now both pedals are off, we can take a closer look at servicing them. Here's a photo of what we can expect to find inside the pedal. So ideally using a vise or something to hold the pedal safely, use a screwdriver and try and prise the dust cap off. Make sure you don't stab yourself though at the same time. So you can see that one's quite rusty in there. So definitely no signs of grease. I'll just do the other pedal as well. See what we find in this one. Whoops. Up. There we go, lost that. Good job that wasn't a ball bearing. And this one looks a little bit cleaner. Right, so now we need to undo the lock nut. So if we put the flat of the axle into the vise, that area there, which is the two flats, and that will hold the pedal sturdy. This pedal's looking quite terrible inside. Definitely in need of a service. So these pedals require a 12mm socket to undo the lock nut. So I'll speed this part up and out comes the lock nut. Or a rusty one. Okay, so then we have a washer next. So a pair of long nose pliers is quite suitable here just to lift that washer off. Like so. Does have a couple of tags on the inside of that washer. Okay, and then we've got the cone to go next. Now the cone in this example is 15 millimeters, but a standard mechanics socket is too wide in diameter to fit down there. So you may need to use long nose pliers again to undo that, or possibly a flat bladed screwdriver. So then once the cone's out, you should be able to see the bearings. In this pedal there's 13 bearings. Definitely no sign of grease in there. So when you take the pedal out of the vise, ensure that you support the axle from underneath. Because if the axle drops, 
it's highly likely the bearings will fall out with it all over your garage floor. And then get the pedal into a suitable container that will make sure you catch all those little bearings. Once you think you've got all the bearings out, it's worth just checking with a little torch to make sure there's not one bearing still sat in there that could get lost once you remove the axle. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of paraffin to give the bearings a quick clean up um, just to get some grit off and the remaining grease. I'll then count them just to make sure how many bearings I've actually got there. And in this example I've got 13 bearings. So now I can go on to the other end of the pedal and remove the axle and the bearings will all start to drop out of here. This is why you need to do it over some sort of container, ideally a magnetic one. So I'll speed this part up where I just get all the bearings out and then again I'll count them all. And it's 13 again on this side. So I'll give them another little squirt of paraffin because paraffin is quite a gentle cleaner. Just to clean those up, get some of the grit off. And then just dab them. Again, you've got to be very careful you don't pick the bearings up accidentally in the tissue and then lose them on the floor. So I'll check again that there's still 13 there. Now I'm assuming that the bearings are actually the same size at each end of the pedal, but just to confirm, because one never knows, I'm just going to check them with a the vernier. We get 3.17 millimetres, so they're probably 3 millimetre bearings. And on the other end, 3.13. Try another one. It'd be nice to get the same result. Yeah, 3.16. So they are the same size on each end. It's worth knowing that just in case. So I'll speed all this part up. Basically it's just to clean all the axle, get all the old grease off. Here I'm cleaning the threads on the axle. Don't forget to wipe all the degreaser off because otherwise that could end up sort of liquefying the grease a bit. Make sure you clean all the bearing cups on the main pedal body like so and then we can start the reassembling job now to assemble all the parts with fresh grease okay so everything should be now ready for assembly so I've got my 13 ball bearings on the right I'm just going to make sure those are all clean and dry. There's no paraffin on them. And the idea is squirt a bit of grease inside the cup where the bearings go. So just squirt a bit around there. And the grease will actually hold the bearings in place. Which will also make assembly easier. And then do the same at the other end. I've put the grease in a little syringe just to make it easier to squirt it in there. I think it's a park tool grease I'm using there. Just a basic standard one. So now the grease is there, that will hold them. Now I can just put each of the ball bearings in one by one. Can be a bit tricky, 
especially since the tray is magnetic. So I'll speed this part up. But you have got to go very careful not to drop any um, or drop any through the middle where the axle goes because that can be a bit of a nightmare to try and fish them back out of there. So that's my 13 bearings in there. Just confirm that. So we can add a little bit of extra grease now on top of that and that should make sure that they definitely stay in place. So that's that side done. Now this is the outside of the pedal. So it's a little bit trickier because it is deeper. So the same procedure again. Just drop them in one at a time. Even my little tweezers started to become magnetic and started to not want to let go of the balls. And then just push the bearings into like the cup that the balls sit in. So now we can actually manhandle the pedal housing without all the bearings falling out. So we've got an element of safety now. So we can add a bit of grease now onto the axle. Leave plenty there. And then we just push this through carefully because again we don't want to dislodge any of the bearings that are in place. So it's worth just being careful. Okay, and then hold the axle in place so it doesn't drop back down. So I'm just cleaning the cone there. I'm going to squirt a bit more grease in. There we are. And then I can screw the cone down. So not the easiest thing because you can't use a socket or anything. But you can use the flat edge of a screwdriver just to work its way down there. So I'll clean up some of the grease. I obviously put a bit too much in probably. So now we're on to the tricky part. So we put the washer in. So that's the washer in. And then the lock nut goes on top. I'm just going to put a dab of three and one on there just to help the lock nut slip on the washer. Because as we tighten this lock nut, it tends to tighten the cone as well. Now the tricky part of tightening the lock nut at just the right point where it's not pinching the bearings all too loose. This may take a few attempts. So if we return the pedal back to the vise and clamp it on the flats of the pedal, that holds it tight. Now as we tighten this lock nut, what it tends to do is tighten the cone as well, which then means the pedal graunches because the bearings are being crushed. So then you've got to very carefully undo the lock nuts and also undo the cone a bit as well. And then re-tighten the lock nuts. And keep doing this until you get to a point where it's just right. See at the moment there's too much play in that. So I adjust it again, then tighten it up. Now 
Now that seems about right. So I'll tighten that fully. So it's spinning nicely and there's no movement up and down. So I'll squirt a bit more grease in there just to try and keep the weather out. And then put the dust cap back on. So that's one pedal done. So I'll clean it all up, get the excess grease off. Seems to be turning nicely. And when I pull on the axle, there's no movement, there's no play. So that's good. So that one's finished. Now on to the second pedal. So now on to the second one. So flats of the axle into the vise. Use your socket, I say 12 millimeters on this one to remove that lock nut. So there's the lock nut out. Use a pair of long nose pliers to remove the washer. And then carefully remove the cone without pinching your fingers. And that did hurt. So there's the cone recovered from the floor. So remember to hold the axle up as you remove the pedal, otherwise all the bearings will fall out and take it onto your tray. So I'll speed this part up again because this is just removing the bearings very carefully and keeping them all together. Using a torch again to check there's no extra bearings still in there. And then remove the axle on the other side and remove those bearings. I actually couldn't find one of the bearings. It was actually on top of the axle on the end. So this is why it is quite important to do all this in a tray. So again a little clean with some paraffin. So I noticed there's only 12. And there was the 13th. These magnetic trays do have a like a double-edged sword. Everything sticks to them. So some things you don't want to stick to the tray and they do stick to the tray. So I'll clean the bearings on the other side with a bit of paraffin. Make sure the cloth that you use doesn't accidentally catch one of the bearings and then you discard it and lose one of the bearings. So I'm going to check how many are there again. Make sure I've got the 13, which I have. So both sides got 13. Not that I'm paranoid. Okay, so now we can clean the axle. Get all that old grease off. Again, I use a little bit of paraffin. This paraffin is quite a gentle cleaner. And it is also somewhat oily. So just cleaning the cone there as well. And don't forget to clean the cups that the bearings sit in in the body of the pedal. That's looking good. So we're on to greasing and reassembling. Now to assemble all the parts with fresh grease.
So the shorter one is the inner part of the pedal. So this is the inside nearer the frame. So pop all your bearings in there and the grease will hold them nice and steady. 13, looking good. Add a bit of extra grease, which would also secure them. And then to the outside of the pedal. And then put all your bearings back in. Make sure you don't lose any down the middle. Are they all in? Nearly. You definitely don't really want something that's magnetic on this. Everything seemed to stick to the bearings. I didn't know all my tools were magnetic. So that's looking good. Pop a bit more grease in there. So I'll grease the axle first. So just push that in gently so you don't disturb any of the bearings. Then the extra bit of grease at the end. Then on goes your cone. Yeah, I did turn the axle on that one. Spin the axle and just screw the cone in. As long as you know the bearings are all there in the right place. And then back on with the washer. And then the lock nuts. And then it's back into the vise to adjust. Now the tricky part of tightening the lock nut at just the right point where it's not pinching the bearings all too loose. This may take a few attempts. So putting the flats of the axle into the bench vise. So I'll tighten it up to see what we get. Yep, too tight. The cone is pinching the bearings. So undo it again. And then undo that cone slightly. Tighten it back up. Now there's too much play. It's spinning, but there's definitely pedal movement there. So we need to undo it again and just tighten the cone slightly with a flat bladed screwdriver and then re tighten. Now that seems okay. Any movement? Nope. That's looking good. So fill it up with some grease, try and stop the water getting back in there. Pop your dust cap on and that's the second pedal done. Yep, that seems alright. So both pedals are spinning well with no side to side play so back on the bike they can go. So noting the letter R on the right pedal which goes on the drive side. So that one goes on clockwise and just tighten that up. looking good and then on to the left so this one tightens in an anti-clockwise direction 
which is obviously a bit unusual. So we go to the left for that. And then tighten that. Jobs are good. Thank you for watching and I hope this helped other home cyclists out.